Jesus name we pray Lord teach me your word Lord teach me your word I want to know your word Lord teach me your word Lord teach me your word I want to know your word Father teach me I want to know your word my God pray 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 Father teach me I want to go to heaven my Lord God Teach me your way God teach me your way I want to know your way Lord teach me your way God teach me your way God teach me your way I want to know your way I want to follow it Lord my God I want to follow you I want to know your way my God Lord, teach me your will. Lord, teach me your will. I want to know your will. Lord, teach me your will. Lord, teach me your will. Lord, teach me your will father teach me I want to know your will my God God teach me your word God teach me your word I want to know your word God teach me your word God teach me your word Lord 
teach me your word Father teach me Jesus teach me Amen Almighty Father We make this request unto you Teach us your word. Amen. Teach us your way. Amen. And teach us your will. Amen. We want to follow you. We want to go to heaven. Amen. We want to overcome oppositions of lie. Attacks of lie. We want to triumph over Satan over sin and over the world it is only in you and by the knowledge and obedience, submission to your world can we really triumph therefore lord teach us your world thank you for answering in jesus name we pray we are taking the message triumphing in life true truth righteousness and holiness triumphing in life true truth righteousness and holiness in the book of matthew chapter 7 Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27 Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sun and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it Jesus Christ here was telling us about the trials of life that will come upon everyone and every institution everyone every human being and every human institution he is saying the world is harsh and inimical The world you are living in is harsh. Satan and his evil kingdom.
put much pressure on the men, women, and children living in this world. There is a great pressure on you. It is the pressure of the fall. Great pressure. There is great pressure, opposing pressure or force on you that you should never reach your destination. It is like that. In fact, it's a general formula of life. And then it is particular on Christians, children of God. Yes, that's what is happening. He said, There is the force of the rain falling to dissolve whatever you are building. There is the pressure or force of the wind blowing against you to pull you down. There is the power and the force of the flood that comes to uproot you completely. This is there. Many have faced it. Some triumphed, but others fell. You are facing it. You will either triumph or you will fail. It's in general, but let's bring it to you as a Christian. Great force. Great force. That some people will live this Christian life to the end. Others will not be able. By reason of these forces against life, the forces of Satan, the power of the devil, the work of the enemy. But the Lord tells us here, the secret of victory, heareth my word, whosoever heareth my word. The word of God is the truth. My word is truth. If ye continue in my word, ye shall know the truth. Whosoever heareth my word and doeth them practices what my word says, righteousness, righteousness, holiness, holiness, then he will withstand the force of life. It is painful, brother that with all this relationship we have together laughing and playing and friendliness you will come to withdraw tomorrow it's painful if you were joking we were not joking when we were relating with you we thought we had established a good relationship forever whatever the lord do it he do it it forever we are not aware that you will pull back later. We were not aware, my sister, that you began well like this with your brethren, with your fellow sisters. It's a joy. But that you will pull away tomorrow and be speaking the language of Egypt and be picking up stones to stun your fellow brethren, the brethren you related well with, is very painful. How do you look at it? You grew up very well with a family member, a relation, a brother, a sister, We're laughing, rejoicing at one another. At a particular time, he became naked, carried stone and stunning you. <clears throat> you know the madness had come upon this person. Are you happy for that? See how painful. That's the pain we are put into 
when a lovely one backslides, when a lovely one draws away from us, it's very, very painful. But then, look at it here. Something went wrong. Something was not done. Long time, and maybe we didn't know, or we took it for granted. Not hearing the word, or hearing the word and not doing the word. So, the forces of life overcame. And we lost that person. Whatever is the complaint, whatever is the accusation, it is that they were not doing the word. Because there is no force, no pressure, no fault, no enmity against a man that equals to that on Christ. Against Christ. None. If thou faint in the day of adversity, what happens to you? Your strength is small. Mighty winds and storms have blown. If you see a man as you're passing by falling flat, what happened? The wind has blown me down. Go to a hospital. Something is wrong with you. Go and check up your, on your health. On your health. That's what it means. God so who so overhear it and do with them of position of life will not overcome him. Whosoever hear it and does not do them, these forces of life will overcome them. If you see yourself lowering, reducing, retarding in spiritual devotion, shame is waiting for you maybe after 10 years. You'll be pulled back maybe five years. Maybe after two years or one year. Why? You're not doing the world. So, we want to tell you this, that righteousness, righteousness, truth, holiness is what will give you victory in your personal life, in your marriage life and family, in your business, in your workplace, in your Christian ministry, and in the church. Truth, righteousness, and holiness is what will preserve you. Is what will preserve you. Many ministries started and didn't continue. They started and were blown aside and left the way. All because of these things I'm saying. I want to consider number one, truth. I'm a triumph. True truth. Number two, triumph. True righteousness. And number three, triumph. True holy living. He that heareth my word. Go back to the text. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. In John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
Truth. Truth is original. Truth is original. If you want to get a product, you want the original product, not a lie. Which means, if you want an information, get the true information. Not fake. Not, not half truth. Get the true information. Truth is dependable. You can stand on the truth. It will never fall you down. You can lie on the truth. It will never affect you. You can go forward by the truth. It will never misdirect you. Truth is dependable. You can depend upon the truth. God is a God of truth. Hence, he is dependable. Jesus is the truth. Hence, he is dependable. Truth is everlasting. It does not change. I am God and I change not. Truth doesn't change. Two times two has been four since the earth began and shall continue so until we leave this earth. It shall never change. And so, if you want to triumph in life, whatever will be the force that may come tomorrow, whatever the enemy will do, however multiplied, they shall become stand on the truth. Do the truth. There's nothing that can be done against you. Tomorrow, you will still be there. Because truth is everlasting. Truth does not change. The words of truth that you spoke last year remain the same. The words of truth that you gave, if they wake you up from deep sleep and ask you, you will still give the same answer. It will not change. So, if you want to triumph over the lying world, because the world is a world of lies. If you want to triumph over this world of lies, it is in truth. Stand on the truth. Do the truth. Truth is undefeatable. You can never defeat the truth. Bury the truth. What will happen to it? After three days it shall rise. If you want to be undefeatable in life, it must be, you must be a man of truth, a woman of truth. I'm telling you, then there's nothing that can be done to you. Look at what the Bible says in first, Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. The Bible tells us here, saying, For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Nothing. If you put yourself on the side of truth, Satan can do nothing against you. All the devil will do is to promote your life. Is to add to your glory. Nothing. The prince of this world came, but he findeth nothing in me. That's secret of triumph. Truth. Everybody say truth. Say it again. Say the third time. 
exactly if you want to overcome man and satan if you want to overcome circumstance if you want to overcome today tomorrow and forever say it again yes. it's truth it's truth truth gives freedom it will set you free inside and outside set you free from god from god's judgment set you free from satan's bondage set you free from human uh, lordship or whatever you call it truth will set you free from evil truth will set you free from evil much heart had come on you because you believed a lie you practiced a lie you followed liars in your respective places they have taught you lies they have told you to follow the path of lies and that keeps you always in defeatism today you will come out of that area your life is going to the higher to the highway you are now going to connect to the highway and make a self journey in life yes therefore listen to the truth where you find truth listen to it in the church where truth is preached pay attention and listen to it believe the truth don't play with the truth believe the truth speak the truth I'm telling you speak the truth act upon the truth take actions of truth take actions of truth administer the truth administer the truth when the Lord revealed to Joseph in Egypt in prison his message concerning two of Pharaoh's servants he administered the truth he did not play over the truth to the man pharaoh shall set you free in two three days to the other pharaoh shall hang cut off your head in three days Port bought truth the problem is we have ministers who are not telling the truth to human beings we have pastors who are not telling the truth to their members. We have parents who are not telling the truth to their children. We have masters that are not telling the truth to their servants. That's the problem. Keeping the environment in constant frustration. Enjoying temporary pledges of sin temporary coverage of sin covering of sin which afterward back to square one oppression suppression bondage fear and all because you are not standing on the truth administer the truth defend the truth don't be ashamed to defend the truth. Don't be ashamed to defend the truth. We were in Liberia. Jesus Christ visited us there. And this is what he said. This is one of the things he said. You have a friend in deeper life among the deeper life ministers pastors overseers 
I appreciate him. I appreciate his service. I told him anywhere they gather to speak against you, he should stand up and defend you in the truth. Because he knows you, he knows your way. The others may not know. I said he should rise up and defend you. If actually these people were doing like that, the truth would have broken through among them. But fear. Because you can't defend the truth. You find a woman dressing in nakedness. Instead of saying, sister, no, this dress, you can't use it. No, it's not. They are, you are ashamed. You cannot defend the truth. And that's what is polluting the environment. But defend the truth. This truth you have believed, defend it. It is precious. It is of God, for God is truth. You are defending God. People want to speak against him. He said, No, not here. He is not what you are saying he is. Defend the truth. Yes. Preach the truth. Preach the truth. Give yourself to truth and see your victory in life. Even when you do evil, accept it. You will come and see the victory you will win in life. Number one, you have won victory over defiled conscience. When you speak the truth, you do evil and you accept that you did it, you have overcome defiled conscience. It's a triumph, a great achievement. Number two, you have, you have brought God into the matter because God is truth. And your salvation over that matter is sure because God is Savior. God is Savior. Then, surely, you will triumph over that matter tomorrow. Whatever is the present pain, you will overcome it. Because truth is victorious. Truth will set you free. That you killed a person and admitted, oh, I did evil. I, it, either my car ran on him, or this what happened, or in fact, I was angry and I killed him. That truth will draw mercy because mercy and truth have met together. The people who aim at doing you evil, when you speak the truth, truth will fight them back and, and keep them arrested. That's why when you go for your restitutions and you tell a man, uh, when I was here, this is what I did, this is what I did, they say, eh? Is that looking at you like this? Because he is defeated. He is a sinner. He has done worse things than that. You mean a human being can come like this and be saying this type of thing we don't want people to hear. He's defeated. He lacks the power of what to do. The truth will set you free. <laughs> Give yourself to truth and see your victory in life. Tell your husband the truth. Tell your husband the truth. Tell your wife the truth. And you will see wonders. The things will act oppositely from what Satan is telling you. What Satan is saying is the lie. That's why people do restitution and still live in marriage. And still walk. David still remained a king, although he fell. Why? Truth. I acknowledge my transgression. My sin will I not hide. Against thee, thee only, have I done this evil. Exactly. Walk in truth and give life to men around you if you will be speaking the truth 
doing the truth walking in the truth living in truth telling people the truth you will give blessing because truth is a blessing truth is light mean around you are in darkness truth is light so live the life of truth walk the walk of truth and give life light to the people around you yes the people are groping about for truth they find themselves in congregations of lies if you can preach the truth you will give life to people yes yeah. speak and do the truth and satan and his evil men shall not stand before you because they can't stand the power of that light truth is light what will set that family free is truth what will set your life free is truth it will so defeat and paralyze satan that he will have nothing to do he loves darkness he is the father of lies he ceases to be the father of the man in truth the woman that has turned over the truth has resigned from satan have resigned has resigned from satan that's what we're saying if you cross over to the truth now get connected to the highway of life you will resign from satan he loves bush rot because that one is the rot for smuggling those who smuggle don't follow highway they follow bush path lies is a bush path lie is a bush path there are people who have made lies their shelter their covering they do their business in lies they receive promotion in lies they receive advancement in lies but it will not stand a lying tongue is but for a moment satan is the one promoting them they must pay for it it is promotion lacking peace rest is promotion lacking genuine pleasure because satan gave it it was true lie never accept those promotions the promotion of lies because thou sayest we have made lie our refuge when the judgment will come it will not come near us the lord said okay lie will now remain your appraisal you will remain under oppression you will remain under defeatism your heart can never be bold in life because the wicked are afraid the hypocrites are afraid your heart can never be bored you can never have confidence in life. you the wicked is like the chaff that is blown about by the wind but to speak the truth to do the truth to stand on the truth requires strength of heart Coward die many times before they are dead. Too fearful. They cannot speak the truth. They are afraid. You must have courage of heart. A story was told of Boko Haram in Maiduguri that got some young boys 
Christian young boys and took them to their camp and, uh, and began to interview them, whether they were 11 or so, began to interview them. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Because they knew they were to face death. Are you a Christian? Never, 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 never. Are you a Christian? Never, never, never. Are you a Christian? Never, never. Are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Only one of them answered that he was a Christian. Speak the truth. It will set you free. The other ones who accept, who said they were Muslims, were killed. Their leader said, these ones that have no courage to stand for their God, even if you bring them to Islam, they will compromise there, clear them off. But this one who has courage to declare the truth now, if you touch him, his God will fight. Make up your mind. You will live in truth. You will not tell lies. Stand up and make this confession. I will live in the truth. I will speak the truth. I will walk in truth. May God help you. You can sit down. The truth requires boldness. It requires courage. To the minister, like Joshua, the Lord told him, only be thou courageous. Only be thou strong and of a good courage. Because these people it will require strength of heart to speak the truth before them. For in leadership, it will require strength of heart not to lie to them. Not to compromise. It will require strength of heart to rebuke a person. It will require strength of heart and boldness. It will require it. Because some people are so strong. Their presence is commanding. If you are not strong, you can't do it. And then if you cannot do it, you are fake like them. You are not original. If you cannot do it, you are fake like them yes but how do you find the truth you find the truth in jesus christ i am the way i am the truth get jesus get him into your heart Let's sing this song together. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. Come into this. Come in to stay, come in to my heart, Lord Jesus, 
That is an invitation to truth. You are asking truth to come into your heart and take a seat in your heart so you can be controlled by the spirit of truth. You can live a life of truth and will never tell lies before your lion husband. You will never tell lies before your tender wife. You will never tell lies to your boss that does not fear God. You will never tell lies before the court. You need Jesus actually to come into your life. To take a seat in your life. Take a seat in your heart. You need Jesus. Into your heart. Where do you find the truth in the world? Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. It is the truth. Well interpreted. I talk more of that. Believe the word of God. Listen to the word of God. It is the word of truth. But sometimes it's very bitter very hard but that's the truth it's like the drugs some drugs are bitter but it's the drug that will cure it you should you need curation or you need cure that's why you need the drug although it's bitter because when the word of god of restitution comes to you or marriage it's not easy that man has not offended you. You love him. In fact, the man is the governor. He's a prominent man. The man is this. The man is that. How do I leave him? If I leave him, I will lose money. I'll lose prestige. prestige. How can I lose all this? Besides, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to hurt. That woman has been so faithful to me. In fact, she cared for me. She was original. She has been original. How do I come to disappoint her? If you have this type of pity, you cannot do the truth. The Bible said, Thy eye shall not pity. That's God. God himself says it. If somebody has done a thing mean for dead, thou shalt stone him with stone that he shall die. And your heart shall not pity him. We're talking about doing the truth and you're bringing human pity. Are you clean? Can, can the feelings of pity and mercy from you be original? So, it will require real boldness and courage. Real boldness to walk in and say, I that you have known to be a pastor here, walking in this office, I was one of the thieves actually. Say, eh? Pastor, what I say? Say, ah, I can't go back there and say this. It will take boldness. It will take courage. If you are not a man of courage, you cannot do it. And you will perish with the other people. And your judgment will be heavy. Because he that knows the truth and does not do it shall be beaten with many stripes. You knew the truth. The others didn't know. But they were still beaten anyway with fewer stripes. But you, your hell will be bigger. You knew the truth. You love human being more than God. Yes. Where do you find the truth? You find the truth from true preachers of the gospel. Not every preacher. 
true preachers of the gospel. Paul the apostle said, I speak the truth in Christ and I lie not. My conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. You'll find it in true preachers. Not every church preaches the truth. Not every preacher preaches the truth. No. No. Many sit in greater congregations than this and they sit under lies. The power their preachers exercise for them, exercises for them is the power of evil spirits. Fake power. Demonic power. They spray other things on them. They're not telling them the truth. A lot of examples of faith they are expressing to them are lies. I've never taken drugs since I was born. It's a lie. Just to make merchandise of you. Confuse you from knowing the truth. Confuse you from having the original truth. It is said if you want to kill a, a monkey, a baboon, you take a knife and try to tear through yourself in pretense. Then you throw the knife to him and he will really carry the knife and tear through himself. Then you go and catch him. The preachers are telling you false testimonies and you think they are telling the truth and you want to go and practice it. You will never succeed. Because what they are telling you is not the truth. Lies. I speak the truth in Christ and I lie not. The Holy Ghost, I mean, my, my conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. We are going to tell you the truth in this place. Amen. By the grace of God. You know, God made this ministry interdenominational. I think he wish, his wisdom is great. So that we will not be struggling for membership. He that wants the truth, let him come. He that doesn't want, he can go. Is that not so? If you come and the word of God is sweet, remain. If it is too much for you, you can. Simple, you can go. That's it. So, that is what the Lord wants us to understand. Yes. We, uh, the, the, the widow of Zarephath told Elijah, Elijah, now I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of truth is in thy mouth. I know. So, I have said Listen to the truth. Believe the truth. Practice the truth. Determine for truth. And you have made a covenant of change that you will ever speak the truth. Amen. Amen. In case you are to be the president of the country or president of an association and they require one lie for you to tell Please, don't tell that lie and lose that presidency. Maybe it's not from God. If it is from God, you will tell the truth and will still get it. Because it's God that is given and your qualification is God. Don't tell lies to benefit anything. Don't. Now, triumph, triumph through righteousness. Remember what we're saying. Back to our text. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and, they, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. 
and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it forces of life i am telling you we moon at our backsliding brethren we moon my conscience bears me witness that I've oppressed no man. I've ill-treated no leader. But why are they backsliding? With all love, with all care, where are they backsliding? Where are they turning off from God? Even if leadership made a mistake, you can't bear. Christianity teaches, doesn't teach you to bear. You cannot bear the mistake of another. Let a friend smite me. It is better than the kisses of an enemy. You can't bear the smiting of a friend. What's wrong with you? Why? Faithful at the wounds of a friend. Your friend created wounds in your life. They are for your good. What if the friend did it bad actually? God forgave him and you too cannot forgive him. Did you really make him know what he did? Has he really been judged clearly that the step taken on you was wrong? Do you, do you consider your future when you are taking this kind of careless decision? Do you consider your future? Have you considered what is the judgment of God? What God is saying about that matter? What is the conclusion of God? Did you consider that? Why are you so careless? No, it's not that. that it is because you were not prepared for the rain. You were not prepared for the wind. You were not prepared for the flood of life. That's why you fell. And your fell is making great noise around the world, around the society. You didn't practice God's word. You were not with us in your heart. You were with us in your mouth. And that's why when reality shows, reality shows up, emptiness was in you. The power of resistance was not there. That's it. Practice the truth and see if you will not be protected. Righteousness is a defense. He that heareth my word and doeth them. Righteousness <clears throat> will give you deliverance from the plots of the enemy. There are a lot of plots against you in lie. The enemies are plotting against you in things you don't know. They are planning for your backsliding. They are planning for your fall. I once told you of a, a woman, who, a man of God, who said that a woman, the devil called meeting of his people and said they were going to pursue him, to get him down, to remove him from the faith, to clear him off from God. How would they do it? A particular woman shot up. He said, give me that contract and give me 27 years. 27 years. You're doing Christianity and you're not planning for tomorrow. Do you know the forces that are following? The snares that are being laid on you? That this Christianity will not continue. Do you know the plan even against your life to kill it? Do you know the plans against your life? The poisons of life, you march, you eat, you lie upon. Because of a nemical world, harsh world, terrible world. Look at what this psalmist said in the book of Psalm 35, verse 4 to 7.
The Bible tells us here, saying, verse 4, Psalm 35, Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my heart. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Why? For without cause have they hid for me their need in a pit which without cause they have digged for my soul. Can you see? No reason. They just dug a, dug a pit for me and laid the need there. I'm saying these are things going on. You're not even aware. Some you know, some you don't know. Verse 10 says, All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, who deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him? Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. The rain descended, the wind blew, and the flood came. All against your life. To stop Christianity in you. Some of you wives don't know that Satan told your husband to remove Christianity from your life. You don't even know this. Instead of following the truth, instead of keeping yourself in righteousness, and my husband say, hey, you're gone. And when you enter here, you will regret it. You will regret you married. You will regret how foolish you were to allow common man to stop you from righteousness. What are you getting from that man? That is more than what God can do for you. That you allow that man to block you from God. You don't know that there's, there's a covenant between that man and Satan. Instead of please, pleasing God as the three Hebrews children before Nebuchadnezzar, you are rather bound down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Because of fire. Hey. This man was not, this man, he said, they let this, it's not because I've done anything against them. No, I'm not. Some of this thing is unaware. You're not even aware. That's what is happening. Yes. It was the righteousness of David that delivered him from all the evil plots of King Saul. What did David do? Saul would have died in the war against Philistines when there was nobody to deliver them. David went and delivered them. Delivered Saul and Saul became great among the Philistines because they feared him and said, ah, he's the king of Israel. But David helped him. David gave him the victory. Yet, what he meant to do with David was great. Only righteousness delivered David. Only righteousness delivered David. Look at it in Psalm 18. Verse 17. Psalm 18 verse 17. It says, the Bible tells us there, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. No, no matter of personal effort can save you from them. They are too strong. The powers they are using against you you cannot match up with them even if you want to go for the powers too 
You want to all go and see Satan, they will be your elder brothers in Satan's, Satan's kingdom. They, you cannot stand them. They were too strong. Your mouth cannot deliver you. They are too strong. Your money cannot save you. They are too strong. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful thou will show thyself merciful. And with the upright man thou will show thyself upright. Righteousness delivers. Psalm 11 verse 4. Psalm 11 verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Some assassins will come to, to assassinate a man. He said, please take this money. Look, I said, no, we didn't come for money. We are not here for money. We are here for your life. Money is not an almighty savior. Righteousness delivers from dead. Go and do righteousness. Go and live a life of righteousness. You will be seeing victory in your life. You will be seeing triumph in your life. All the works of the devil, both those you know, those you don't know, you will overcome them. Yeah. Angels of God shall deal with your enemy for you. Yeah. Righteousness will make you triumph. Yes. Daniel was delivered from the plot of wicked people for his righteousness. Righteousness delivered from dead. You will triumph over your enemies by righteousness. In the book of Daniel, chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, we're told of the plot that the wicked people plant against Daniel. Verse 4. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, no fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him righteousness. He was not even aware of this plot. He was living his righteous life. And all plots were failing. All wicked plans were failing. Live a righteous life. Witches and wizards will fail in their plan. All they will be planning to do in the night they meet together. And plan. And think to execute it. They will not be able It is said that a particular, I think some Muslims were saying, if the plans they had made over Christians in Nigeria, they had the power to execute them, Christianity wouldn't have been there again. This country would have gone Islamic long. But their, their surprise is they will plan, it will fail. They will plan, it will fail. They will plan, it will fail. 
let your me your enemy plan and if and fail yeah. i said be your enemy plan and fail yeah. may your enemies plan and fail yeah. righteousness deliver it from death they did all they said no this man we can't find a way god is behind you god stands behind you god is the leader the lord is your shepherd therefore you shall not fall nothing will happen to you before your time for righteousness will deliver you yes then what happened to these people what happened to these people in verse 5 then said this man we shall not find any occasion against this daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his god as long as daniel serves the lord follows the word of his god the ways of his god the law of his god we can never find any occasion of judgment over him of heart over him of harm over him of death over him the only thing now let's go and interrupt between him and his god and separate them it is then we can find occasion against daniel that's what the enemy is saying that's why i talk to the women they are not aware that satan knows that as long as you keep clean you keep righteous nothing everything will fail over your life so let's go and separate between him and his god which instrument are we going to use use king darius to the to the married woman use her husband and so they came to king darius and said we want to make you we want to promote you that in the space of 30 days nobody should pray to any other person anywhere except to you the man didn't know that it was for daniel sign a decree that even you cannot change we mean business you have done too wonderfully for us in this kingdom people that flatter with their mouth and the king signed that decree verse 10 now when daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a full time. May this power of righteousness that comes, that makes you unchanging in the presence of death, take over where you're sitting now. Take over where you're standing now may it come like the rain from heaven and suck your life Amen. that nothing can change you from god Amen. nothing you have made up your mind i have chosen the way the, the way of truth I've, it's a choice so daniel went to his prayer and prayed as no man, no fear this is what God wants. This is how you will give glory to God. The three Hebrews children gave that glory. King Nebuchadnezzar in all his rage and anger meant nothing to them. The burning fire, burned, I mean, heated seven times, meant nothing. I will not change my righteousness. Termination from office, termination of marriage, termination of what? What tell me removal of privileges, whatever means nothing. This is the righteousness God wants. Is he not worthy for it? Who is more than him that is making you compromise? Compromise in school. That did he ask you to bring certificate to him? Are you trying to show that without certificate, God cannot promote you? yes and eventually what happened 
Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of heart was found on him. Why? Because he believed in his God. God wants to intervene for your life. God wants to defend his name that you're carrying. Allow every circumstance that things to challenge God to come. And stand. Behold, he that justified me is with me. Who can stand against me? Let him come. Let's stand, let's stand together for judgment. God is with you to save you. God is with you to surprise the world for you. God is with you to promote your life. To bring shame to your enemy. Therefore stand. Don't shake. Don't change. Don't seek the mercy of man. Seek the mercy of God. You may not need the mercy of that man you're laboring over. Yes. Righteousness delivers. Hezekiah was dying through the sickness he suffered from. He pleaded with God for his healing on account of his righteousness. On account of his righteousness. Isaiah chapter 38 verse 1 to verse 5. Isaiah 38 verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible tells us here how Hezekiah delivered himself on account of righteousness. Yes. Verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have worked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of thy father, David, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy, thy, thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. On account of righteousness. On account of righteousness. God, why am I dying? I am faithful to you. I am faithful to your word. I'm faithful in paying my tithes. I do evangelism. I, I, I give for your work. I do the Lord, why is this evil happening? Why is this thing happening to me? Why would you not keep your word to me? The Lord said, I will keep it. I say, I will keep my word with you. I'll keep my promise. I will be faithful. Take yourself to God on account of your righteousness and prevail in prayer. The miracle you're desiring will come. Yes. That's what we're saying. Paul the apostle and his team were delivered from a great danger because they served in righteousness and put their faith on him. You too will triumph in life through righteousness in your life. Finally, 
triumph through holy living. Triumph through holy living. In the book of Genesis, chapter 35, verse 1 to verse 5. Genesis, chapter 35, verse 1 to verse 5. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there. And make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fledest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean, and change your garments. And let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the ark which was by Shechem and the journey and the terror of them was upon the cities that were round about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob the presence of God holiness of life draws us nearer God and makes us live in his protective presence when Jacob and his household cleansed themselves truly from evil to live holy before God they enjoyed his greater presence and that gave them honor protection and safety in their journey yes for the sake of the holy life demanded by God you must cleanse yourself inside and outside in your heart and in the body purifying yourself from the filthiness of the heart and of the flesh this is important this requires sanctification of your heart from inward sins and the removal of ungodly clothing and adornment. If you do this and live continually in his truth, righteousness and holiness, you will triumph in life wherever you live and wherever you go. The devil knows his people. The devil knows those who are still in his periphery. The devil knows you. And that's where torture is coming. If you read that book, Divine Revelation and Scriptural Examination on Believers' Holiness in Clothing and Adornment, one of the persons, a young boy, the Lord took to in Revelation to India, showed clearly that this, um, the, the cosmetics, used in the in the hair that's in palming of the hair and changing the, the texture of the hair of your skin they are made with human fats and in fact in, in some of these bottles as i was told they wrote placenta there have you seen that placenta is written clear that this is coming from human placenta and yet it doesn't bother you which way are you thinking that christianity would mouth and you're not changing you're not stopping this ungodliness in an attire will bring the protection of god you're wasting your time the lord told jacob go up to better why you made a covenant of righteousness and holiness with me and jacob said now we are going to make going to where I covenanted with God to serve him fully, wholeheartedly, without sin. Now, take away the strange things, strange gods that are with you, strange clothing that are with you. Take them away. And be clean. Change your garments. They, they began to gather the strange gods, the earrings, the rings, the chains, the bracelets, because these things are demonic. These things are unclean. He said, but my own, they manufacture, I manufactured them by myself. 
you manufacture them by yourself both in the market or manufactured by yourself has the same spirit iniquity is of spirit it's of spirit you get what i'm saying so when they cl clear those things off from themselves they said the bible says the presence of god was among them greatly and the nations surrounding them could not hurt them because of the holy presence of god bring yourself to holiness in your heart remove jealousy envy malice hatred and all these things that is there go back to jesus to rinse you to cleanse you to purge you to sanctify your heart then in your clothing remove ungodliness filthiness of the flesh earrings rings nose rings jewels perfume palming attachment bleaching beads what do you call them with all what if it, what again dying of your hair what other things women putting on trousers what other things tango you know them cleanse yourself from these things and be holy and you mean all this bobbing style that you bob lizard on your head how now this thing is bad this thing is bad you carry a coffin in your head and you are playing drum that's where god is not in these churches you are the one inspiring people to dance look at your hair that here shows that your name is in hellfire your, your bobbing style shows clearly your name is in hellfire and you women please my breathing don't be tired because they have made churches to backslide their preachers became tired of reproving them you are wearing skate please let's sit properly there you are wearing skate that is just at your knee here you are wearing gown that is just at your knee here flying and the leaders are keeping quiet they have overcome leaders that you're seeing them like this and there are, there are people you know who have been in the holiness who have claimed to be holiness for long and you're not touching them or a woman will be carrying her child and say i am holiness the, the baby girl is wearing earrings it's my husband she doesn't know jesus who is her husband her husband and jesus who is greater she doesn't know jesus if you are the one that your child your baby girl is still dressed in an ungodly way and you're telling jesus that this is your husband he will deal with you you are making him ashamed you bring jesus to your husband and and render jesus foolish and give more honor to your husband than jesus these are not the people we're looking for we're looking for people that are ready to die for jesus People that will receive slaps from their husband until they are tired and they continue. These are the people we're looking for. So dress well. Your, righteous, your righteousness, your holiness should be seen inside and outside. Very, very vital. Check the dresses of the choir people in your place. Check their skin too. If they're becoming too light, you find out what's happening. Why are you getting lighter than before? That is a lie. Your skin is a lie. It's not original. We need holiness. If we get the original holiness, the presence of God will be with us. The honor of God will be with us. The protection of God will be with us. And in every way, we shall triumph in life. Triumph in life based on truth righteousness and holiness deal sincerely with people don't be a pretender deal with that anger carry that anger to god that lying lips carry it to god and clear it from your life let's rise up upon our feet and tell the lord we are grateful for the secret of triumph 
we won't backslide. If you don't take this thing original, you will backslide on the way. You will come up and say, eh, this person did me like this. No, you were not practicing God's word. That's why you lack the strength to stand. Stand on the truth. He that heareth my word and doeth them. He that heareth my word and doeth them. He shall not fall. Whatever the power of the rain, the power of the wind, the power of the floor. Holy, holy, holy highway of holiness. Highway of holiness. Righteousness will deliver you from evil plot. They will not find any occasion against you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that you have given unto us. Lord, we bring ourselves before you. You have given us a message on the truth. Triumphing, true righteousness, holiness, and truth. Every area where we have failed in the past, where we have lacked courage and boldness, to walk in the truth, to stand by the truth, to defend the truth, to preach the truth. Father, we repent before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but you have given unto us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and of a sound mind. Father, we reject every fear, fear of man, fear of persecution, fear to do restitution, fear to stand by the truth. Father, we reject it today in Jesus' name. We shall stand for the truth. We shall preach the truth. We shall practice the truth. We shall tell the truth. 
whatever be the cost of telling the truth. For your word said, who have you feared that you have you have lied against me we shall not tell lies we shall stand by the truth in jesus name Amen. father we are praying for your church all the corruption has crept into the church pollutions defilement that is making the spirit of god to want to leave the church father we are praying against them in the name of jesus purge your church O oh lord cleanse the church O oh lord every defilement every pollution as we stand for the truth may it depart from the church in jesus name Amen. cause this revival to continue to spread forth to the ends of the earth in jesus name Amen. thank you our father for answer to prayers in jesus mighty name we are prayed and amen the message you have just listened to is a production of holiness revival movement worldwide holiness revival movement worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades revival meetings production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe Savior. Jesus, I, I believe. believe.
in you. You are the living Savior. I believe you, Lord, cause you 